Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Shara. Thank you so much. You were so right on point. So before we further go in, I just want to welcome each and every one of you. And knowing that this quarter, we are getting these lessons for a reason. It's to repair our character, repair it, because we all have character, but are we having the good ones so that we can build God's character in us because God is waiting for a church who will model his character, okay? So the more we go into these lessons that are preparing for us in these end time, we will be able to emulate what Jesus did when he was on her. So I hope that you, each week that we um, give you certain lessons, it's not going to be a full study. It's just going to be a synopsis. That means quick. So write down all the scriptures that you're here, you're getting, and go back during the week and go into the word. Because once you're in the word, that's when the Holy Spirit will bring light to you and allow you to grow. Okay? So our opening song today will be The Church as One Foundation. So you can sing it on top of your voice. Just mute and sing it as I will. those words i want you to meditate on them also you understand it give you that understanding it gives you that understanding so in this lesson we are going to see where god's love is so unconditional and the love that he has for us we too can have it for others so we're going to see the good example in abraham you're going to see hospitality. You're going to see how hospitality can help minister to people. You're going to see how hospitality give you the opportunity to bless others. You're going to see how hospitality can even 
um, make you a better person. And you're going to see that not because we are, we call ourselves Christians or we are Christians. It doesn't mean that we must shun sinners. We are all sinners, but those who do not accept our believers yet, we still must show them love no matter what. But as, as you know, we are in this world. So in everything, we have to be very careful because God gives us a sound mind. So we must know how to make decisions and we must know how, when we're showing hospitality, how to do it, okay? Because not everyone you're going to really take into your home. But as I said, with the discernment of speed that you prayed for each and every day, you will know who you should take into your home. But it doesn't mean that you cannot show hospitality. You can show hospitality by bringing someone to lunch, someone who don't have anything. And this week challenge, I'm going to challenge everyone to observe your community and see who is going through a hard time. And try and make a difference. It doesn't matter how small it is. It doesn't have to be big. Just small. And reach out to that person or that family. All right? And let them know that someone in their community cares. You will be surprised what that can do. And you're going to see how hospitality also strengthens relationship. Okay? <clears throat> so share God's mission. That's the title for today. Sorry, I'm, I'm moving too fast. Sorry. God's mission is to save humanity. Do you see that love just from that? God's mission is to save humanity. Right there is mission. You can see the love. You can feel the love. You can even remember going back into Eden in Genesis and to see, you know, what Adam and Eve, the way they were living, they have everything that they ever needed, everything. But because of curiosity and because of, you know, somebody whispering in your ears or whatever, always remember what the true, what you believe in. And even when you hear people saying things, don't jump to believe it too quick, okay? Research it for yourself. Now we can research. Adam and Eve didn't have computer like what we have. And even though we have computer, sometimes not everything on Google is true. So we go back into God's word because he have that book as our guide so that we can know the difference, okay? To achieve this purpose, he has assigned each of us a part in fulfilling that mission. Through the example of Abraham, we will study some of the ways in which we can share God's mission. Sharing God's mission, are you going to see, as I said before, hospitality? So we're going to focus on Genesis 18, 1, as a matter of fact, the old chapter in Genesis 18. But hospitality, you're going to see where Abraham shows hospitality in 18, verses 1 to 15, is love for others. Um, Genesis 18, 16 to 23, intercessory prior, Genesis 18, verses 24 to 33. And the mission results, accept individual decisions and submit to the divine will. And as I said, the memory texts, I just want you to remember this. John 13, verse 34, and it reads, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Okay? Love for one another. And we know that love, unconditional love, we don't just love somebody when that person can give you something or do something for you. You love somebody regardless, okay? Regardless if the person hurt you, if the person said they hate you, whatever it is, the love of Christ in you just keep pouring out still, okay? That's the type of love. That's God's love. Not just when they can do something for you or can um, be by your side or give you something. No, that's not the type of love. 
we must have unconditional love. The hospitality, do not forget hospitality, for by it some have also the angels without knowing it. Hebrews 13, verse 2. And I always keep this in my form, you know, in my mind, because I can never forget. And I said, enough of you have testimony, and I want you to be able to share it because it will bless someone else. When I used to work in Manhattan and I used to travel the train, and I used to see so many people, you know, passing by begging and whatever, but those who always beg and ask for money to buy food, it always touches me. And if there goes a time when I don't even give them, if it's even, I remember back in the days, 50 cents could buy a cup of coffee or cocoa, I cocoa. And I remember if I didn't give it to, I remember one person, I didn't really give it because I hear somebody saying, you know, they're just going to buy drugs or cigarette or whatever and stuff. And it, it haunts me, my conscience. I said, I have it and I could give that person. I don't know what that person want to do with it. But when they said food, because nobody should really grow, go hungry. No one. It just touches my heart. And I really realized that I said to myself, when I came off the train, I said, what if God sent that person as a test to me? Because that person could be an angel of disguise as a beggar. Just to test us to see how faithful we are to God. Because as I said, we're not doing it to the person. We're doing it for God. Because we are his agent in this world. So we must do whatever. He, he blesses us so that we can bless others. And from that, I always said, no matter what, even if it's my last dollar, I meet somebody and they say they're hungry, I'm giving it to them. Because I know when I reach home, I have food. So I'm imploring you guys, you know, it's so easy to do. All right. It's really is easy to do. Sometimes we our if we're not focusing on our circumstances and look and see how other people maybe have a worse situation than we do, you will realize how easy it is to do that. And by doing that, trust me, God will bless you more abundantly. So we see here how oh, Abraham Hawks, when he, you know, he was resting from the sun, from the cool. Sitting in the shade at the door of his tent, Abraham saw three people pass by him. Immediately, he ran towards them. He did not wait for them to request his hospitality, if they intended to do so, but took the in. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. How are you doing? Hello, happy Sabbath. Everyone has a choice. For be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. For be it from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? That's Genesis 18.25. And we see with Abraham and Lot. Both of them were sitting at the door. And both of them receive visits from angels. They invite people to eat, both of them. They intercede on others' behalf. 
Notice the similarity between Lot's behavior and Abraham's. And you remember Abraham's um, people and Lot's people were quarreling over land, right? But Abraham stay aside and let them choose the best of everything. So sometimes you have things and you're giving it away or whatever, you want to give it away. You call people to come and look on whatever. Let them choose for themselves. Give them the best of what you have. So this also will show you, show them the love of God in you. While 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 you're yeah. transitioning there, I just wanted to share if you notice if you notice a trend when 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 Abraham was interceding, the trend was he started with those that God would obviously save, right? He started with um everyone, the, the entire city. If you can at least save the entire city, let's see the most people that we can save. And in our lives, we should try to reach the most people that we can reach. Abraham's missionary spirit, he tried to reach the most people, not the least, the most that he can reach, the most that he can intercede for. Because his conversation with God was prayer. That was, that was intercession. Even though he was not kneeling and closing his eyes and so forth, he was still praying for them. That is what prayer is. So he tried to intercede or on behalf of at least the most people that God can save. And even though they deserve the punishment that God had for them, God still extended mercy. So you can see that also Abraham's spirit of Paul was motivated by love. Um. I don't know. Something's going on with the um. Am I there? Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Are yes. You, are yes. you? Yeah. Can you right? Yeah. Let you stay there. And by so, God's what, answer, what, yes. So I'm I'm going to ask a question to everyone on the platform. When you pray, what is your prayer motivated on? Is it going to be motivated by because of longing for something or wanting for something? Because not every time we must plead and begging God to, you know, um, I'm praying for financial situation. I'm praying for whatever. Not I'll all the time we pray like that because God really know our needs. And once you put it before him, you don't have to pray that every day or for the week. You put it there because God see and know. And, and it's good and also, time to connect out of love for somebody. You see somebody fall down. You see an accident. Pray for that person who is in an accident. Pray for that person drunk. Pray, pray for somebody you see in your community. And take the focus off you. Because God already know you. And know what you stand in need of. And you already put in that petition. So you just have to wait now. Give Do a prayer of thanksgiving then. And, and 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 even on that point, the the purpose. What's the highest goal for our prayers or intercessions before God? Our highest goals are for the same goals that God has to let His mm -hmm. kingdom come and let His will be done. That's why we pray. It, mm -hmm. And this baffles me because if we approach prayer as um as 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 a as a bank account or something that God can just provide all of our needs, then we miss the point of prayer. God will provide God will provide our needs in answer to prayer. Yes, but we should not monopolize prayer for our own desires, right. or else God it will not change our hearts. Right, and we will not reflect the character of God. So now we have to reassess our motive for interceding for intercession or for reaching God. And we have to now change our direction in prayer and try to fulfill God's will. Now, God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? All these things shall be added unto you. So every time you go before God, seek the benefit of others. Pray for the salvation of your loved ones, of, of people that you're trying to reach. And God will supply your need to reach their need. 
God will and give you. Notes. Yeah, he will. He will form. He will shape your character in such a way that it will appeal to them. And so you don't have to worry about your needs. Worry about them. Worry about saving the lost, and God will reach you. God will take care of everything else. Um, I see Sister Julian put in the chat. Isn't that why Jesus came? Because God would kill us. Jesus came because God. He came because He's the only one that has the authority to allow us sinners to go face to face back to God. God love us. He would not just kill us because remember the plan of salvation was made before the world come into existence because he know that man was going to um, disobey. So he put in that plan of, um, plan of redemption. So God did not really want to kill us. He could have wiped off what Adam and Eve right away and start all over. But he know what he's doing. God knows and he loves us and he wants to see us. It's just that we are suffering because of sin. He didn't want sin to really come in and whatever. It's like, for instance, you have, um, you make something and you want to make sure it's work or it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you're going to toss it out, right? But God knows that with us human, there has to be a chance for to see that they will walk in a righteousness and to obey, obey the laws. We obey the laws of the land because we don't want to go to prison, right? Why can't we obey the law of God? Because then El, what is going to made for Satan and his fallen angels, it wasn't meant for us. So God did not really want to kill us as you know, you may, you make it sound or so, but Jesus was there. Everything was planned so that Jesus would come down. Jesus is God. And he came down on earth and called Jesus so that he can fulfill the father's promise and the father's mission. And Sister Ellen wrote, in the mercy of the world, God blotted out its wicked inhabitants in Noah's time. In mercy, he destroyed the corrupt dwellers in Sodom. It is in the mercy to the universe that God will finally destroy the rejecters of his grace. And that is from Grace Controversy, page 543. Thank you so much, Sister Ellen. So as we see, we need to submit to divine will. And Abram went up in the morning and he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and behold, the smoke was rising from the earth like the smoke of a furnace. So as you see, we saw that in the end, if you re continue to read the chapter, our angels as to drag Lot and his family out of, out of Sodom. And then now his wife looked back because her heart wasn't with God. She want, she looking at what she's missing in the city. And when she turned back, you see what she becomes? A pillar of salt. So even now, sometimes I pray for angels to even drag my children out of the city to open their eyes. You see our angel because God knows his righteous people. He does because he knows everything. So he knows those who are going to be in his kingdom. Gar said, I wish to understand why God loves us so much. We are so evil and ungrateful and love sin more than God. Well, tune into our Bible study on Sunday at 530 and you will get more understanding of who God is to us. We are is his creation. We are the apple of his eye. And as I said, we who have children get a feel of what God is because God is our parents, right? Oh, we, are, we are parents to children for those who have children. And then no matter what they do, we love them anyway. You have some people maybe still don't love their children. As for me, I'm speaking of me. Whatever they do, I still love them anyway. I'm not going to, um, you know, whatever they're doing that is wrong, I'm not going to appall with it. I'll tell them, but I still love them anyway and hope that they will see the light or, you know, try to walk in righteousness. When God called him to go to Canaan and be a blessing to the world, Abraham obeyed. He did not ignore the call, nor did he give in any ifs and buts. Right now, we see where this lesson telling us that we must be God's mission. Are we going to ignore it? God's want us to be his mission. He's telling us 
that we must be make his mission be our mission. Are we going to ignore it? And we see it doesn't take much. All we need to do, and when we obey him, we're leading those in the dark to light. We are letting them see God's love through us, through what we do. Having to separate from his nephew, he let him choose the territory, knowing that God would fulfill his will in any case. See, he said, um, Lot is Abraham's nephew, and he separated from him. But then when he was in trouble, he still go and help him. Because he, you know, he in some way, he sort of lose his way. But Abraham still tried to guide him because of love and the love of God. It's the same way we must be like Abraham to anyone, whether it's our family member or those who, whose life we can touch. After his intercessory prayer for Sodom, Abraham left the next morning, hoping to see his request fulfilled. But what he saw was destruction. There was no complaints from him. Once again, he submitted to the divine will. We must always accept God's will, even if it differs from ours. A lot of time we even pray for somebody who is sick for God to heal them. And even if they don't heal or they die from their illness, we, you know, we um, ponder, but we are not supposed to ponder because it's not up to us. We can pray, yes, because he told us to, but in the end, it's gonna be his will. Let his will be done because he knows the future. A lot of people he know that if he heals them, they will end up go back to their bad ways of whether it's alcohol, whatever they were doing. And when God's heal you, he wants you to use your body as a living sacrifice to go out and proclaim and say what he's done for you so that others may see. So these are things we must really understand but for, as I said, for more in depth, you have to go into his word so that the Holy Spirit will guide you into truth. Love for perishing souls impaired Abraham's prayer, inspired, sorry, Abraham's prayer. While he loathed the sins of that corrupt city, he desired that the sinners might be saved. His deep interest for Sodom shows the anxiety that we should feel for the impenitent, impenitent. We should cherish hatred of sin. That means that we must hate sin, but pity and love the sinner. So sometimes we see people, and some of them don't even understand why we speak up against LGBT and all the other stuff. We don't love the lifestyle, but we love them who are in the lifestyle. We might have even a child who is gone that way. We don't love what they're doing, but we love our children. We love th that child. It's the same way. God loves us, but he does not love the sin that we keep, get ourselves caught up in. So always remember that. So before our time uh, is going, I'm just going to give someone the opportunity who is doing our challenge. Who is doing our challenge? I just want to give them an opportunity to give a testimony of what they did for this week. And remember, our weekly challenge in every city Wow, this keeps disappearing. In our city, we face obstacles to preaching the gospel appropriately and effectively. We need to beg God to intervene. And that is why I said for those who can afford to buy literature, books, have the books, pray over it before you leave house. And then when you go out, each person you hand it to and pray that the Holy Spirit will indulge, you know, tug, tug at their heart to open that book and read. And the advanced challenge, especially for this week, find a way to connect. Find a way to connect to someone in your community who is going through a difficult situation similar to yours. Tell the person you are praying for them and ask God to show you what you can do for them. And as I said, it might be a single mother with a child. They might need some clothes or whatever. You see the child not dressed for the season. As I said, there is so many stores that are on sale right now. When there is food, there is so many places you can buy even a fruit and give it to this child. I said you, I said to last week, you can buy one of those gift bags and buy going to the Dollar General, Dollar Tree or whatever, and buy like a pair of socks. These fluffy socks, their feet might be cold right now. Buy a sanitizer, buy something and just five items and put it in that bag. 
and hand it to someone who you pass every day or hand it to someone on your way to wherever you're going. And you are doing God's mission. So is there anyone with a testimony today? You can open up your mic and tell your testimony because it will inspire someone. Not one? Not one person with a testimony? Who did you reach today, last week, during the week? Did you reach anyone? Did you pray for anyone? Give a testimony. Go ahead, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you now. I'm hearing you now. Go ahead. Okay. I, I work at the airport. Um, I live in Bermuda. I work at the airport. And I push wheelchairs. So yesterday, I was pushing somebody up to one of the gates. And I passed this lady who was on the phone and crying. I passed by her on my way back and I had some, I was with somebody and I said to them, just give me a minute. And I ran in and I picked up some tissues out the bathroom and I took them to her. She said, thank you. And I had to come back up because I was taking a gentleman down that had left something in customs. So on the way back up, she was still there and crying. So I ran and I got more tissues and I got extra tissues and went to her and I said, um, here's some more tissues and here's some extra. I said, I don't know what you're going through, but can I pray for you? And she said, yes, I just lost somebody. And so I prayed with her and for her. And at the end of the prayer, she said, thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. And I told her, I said, you know, I know what you're going through because just in March of this year, I lost a very dear friend too. So I can sympathize with you. And it's not day by day, but it's moment by moment that you just need to breathe and get through it. And she hugged me and thanked me. And I may never see the lady again. I don't know who she was or anything like that. I just knew that whatever she was going through, was traumatic for her Amen. and so i just felt the need to stop and pray for her amen. amen that's it my dear that's it things like that you will never see the person again or maybe one day you never know you will see that person and see the simple thing you think you did how it becomes a great impact in that person's life and every one of us can do that and things are going to come in our way to see how we will react. Let it be re our reaction should be Christ-like. Help that person whenever you can, because you never know. Maybe you're going to be find yourself in a situation where somebody will help you also. Because you never know. We are traveling on a journey. We are pilgrims. And we're going to move from place to place. Okay? Just like Abraham, God moving from place to place. God going to move some of us from our comfort zone and let us know that out there, whether we are, whether we think we have it going or whatever, but out there, we must let our light shine, let his light shine through us so that others may see. So I really hope, you know, you need to be encouraged. You need to be encouraged. Be quick to, you know, I wanted to see three, four people raise their hand or open their mic. I want to say something. You have to do something. You can't be sleeping. We have to be awake. Now is the time to be awake. Okay. I hope that you have been blessed and I hope that you get something from this topic to share God's mission to someone this coming week. Okay. Whether it's in your family or in your community. Well, time is going. So tech team, I don't know if you want to play that song, play it short because the time is going for divine service. So I thank you guys for tuning in. And I pray that you go back and read Genesis 18 and get the good grip of what the lesson trying to tell us, okay? All right, let me just say a quick word of prayer. Our Father and our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
We thank you, God, for waking us up in our right mind. We thank you, dear Father, for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us so far. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who is always among us to guide us into your truth and righteousness. And I pray, dear God, that you help us to be humble. Help us to faithfully to follow you, dear God. Help us to be more involved in your mission, dear God. Help us to love unconditionally like you do, dear Father. I pray, dear God, that every participant here, dear God, who will listen to this message, this lesson, I pray that they will go out, dear God, and let your mission be their mission, dear God, to show your love to others, to be hospitable, to be hospitable to someone this week, dear God. It doesn't mean that they have to take that person in, but just by giving that person something to eat or by showing that person the right way, by handing a booklet, whatever it is, dear God, I pray that they move one step forward, dear God, to carry on your mission until Jesus come. This I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.